we've got Zoom going on, and we'll go through that. And then, if you will, join me in uh, in the prayer today. God, thank you just for waking us up this morning. Just what a blessing it is to have another day to be able to do your will here on earth. We thank you for the talents and the treasures that you've given us to help other people in this community, the ability to be here as a club and join with our friends and fellow Rotarians. God, we just thank you for all the blessings in our lives, from family to friends to work to homes to everything that we take for granted. God, just help us to just be grateful for it. Lord, we know there's times where we fall shy and we just drift apart and we move further from you. And God, we just want to say we're sorry. If you give us the chance, we just hope that you'll just give us the strength to do better, not just to grow closer to you, but to bring other people closer to you and to know you. Lord, we ask as we go throughout this meeting, we make decisions that are beneficial uh, for the community and that serve your needs and not our own. We thank you for all that you've done for us and for your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 You will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag for the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we don't have Tony. We don't have um, Tom. I'm going to step away from the mic so that we don't hear anything, but we just service before, you might enjoy this if you like pomp and ceremony. It's based on the service at uh, the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. I have to be like that minus the incense. Visitors with her parents? I have Nancy Williamson. She's friend and co-worker. Welcome, Nancy. I think that's all that I saw. All right. Um, announcements, I'll start with Joseph, you beat me to it, but um, we've got that. Also, this Thursday, we still need people to go to the district installation, the district officer installation banquet. If you are available Thursday, there's a lot going on. You can, I've said this before, you can go, you can give blood, you can take your cookies and your refreshments, you can go to the officer installation banquet, and then make your way back for United Way Trivia Night. So Thursday is a half-filled day. Christy will have the end of the refreshments. So if you're running short on blood sugar at that point, she's got you covered all the way from start to finish. All right, so a lot going on. We do need people for that team of Rotarians that we're sponsoring to have a team that's going to win um, the United Way Trivia. 
preferably we need at least two people that are Carolina grads, Matt and David. Um, Peyton, you're eligible as well. We could throw a state person in if we just need a, somebody to fill a seat. <laughs> um, other announcements that people have. Uh, I'll make one more. I'm sorry, Larry. I, I, I meant to say this. Uh, if you will, um, thoughts and prayers. Kyle Wallace is the wife of Janet, great lady, um, sweet as could be. She had a fall the other day. Um, she, she's okay. Um, did hit her arm, broke her arm. She's got to get um, some uh, plates and screws and some things done surgically. Um, but if you'll just keep Janet and your thoughts and prayers, Kyle said it was okay to announce that. So keep Kyle and Janet uh, and their family in your prayers, if you will. Larry. The blood drive is tomorrow. Everybody must be going to the office installation back because they're not going to be We have uh, 22 people signed up for 36 slots. We have 14 available, and we really need because usually uh, those 22, some of them won't be there. So we really need your help because there's a little shortage uh, for blood right now uh, in the whole country. So we need some people to come out. Is this on the rotary uh It can be. It can be. Yeah. Oh, I'll show her. We have five families for appearance. 
celebrating birthdays in June. And I was saying one of them is here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
say to start, I had three great years of being at the college, and one of the things that I being at the college is we had great peace. And uh, Jill Sorry, who will give us our program today, is one of those just fantastic people who cares about her students, people, and more importantly, our students attaining, whether it's through ESL, uh, our adult high school programs, uh, our college and career readies, moving them into our curricular programs. She truly uh, is in the front lines every day uh, helping these people find a path to success. Uh, so Jill started her education journey in 1982. We kind of chuckled. She says, Jonathan, were you even born in 82? And I said, of course, Carolina won the national championship in 1982. I was in the second grade. So, uh, <laughs> and then she said, well, you know, I just had graduated from college. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, but Jill uh, served from K-12 and then in 2004 <laughs> came to the college. Uh, as a GED instructor here at the Commonwealth Education Center, and then in uh, 2014, my right, uh, entered her role where she is now currently the director of career college readiness. And I can't tell you that there's a lot of things we do at the college, and we really, when you think about everything we offer, you've got our curriculum programs, you've got our continuing <coughs> education programs, but we also have our CCR programs. We serve around there between an average year between 10 to 12,000 students across those campuses. And I would say CCR probably covers at least one to 2,000 uh, students a year. So a lot of people, you don't see it, you don't hear it, uh, but those are the people we're trying to really lift up and bring them there. And they're doing it all because of this fine young lady, Jill Sword. So Jill, come on up. She cares about her neighbors too. That's right. That's right. I, I am one. That's right. Well, hello everybody. Um, I just want to tell you a quick little bit of why I'm here today, um, and then we'll go with, with what I've got that I want to tell you about. But um, a few weeks ago, I met with the Lexington Rotary, some of the Rotary members. They partner with our youth program, which is right now called Get Real. It's getting ready to move to the campus and called Atlas. And they do a program with them monthly. And so the question came up in this conversation, well, does anybody have a contact with Thomasville Rotary? And I said, me? I do. So um, I, I called Dr. Randy Berry and or emailed him. And, and then, um, long story short, here I am. Going to present a little bit to you today and see if there's a big way or if, if y'all would be interested in partnering with us to do um, anything um, at the college with our students. Before um, I get into what Lexington does, I want to tell you a little bit about CCR and I'll make this fairly quick, but I've got it up here on the screen. These are all the things that are in CCR. And some of you maybe have never heard of CCR College and Career Readiness. But these are the things we have. We have a program for adult high school. That's where students come to us and finish their courses that they didn't finish if they um, dropped out of high school. We can take them at the earliest at 16 years of age, and they come in and they work on that to get their diplomas. High school equivalency. People are probably familiar with the GED program. Well, now we have two tests that the students can take to get their high school equivalency. One is the HISET and one is the GED. They come in and they take a series of assessments to get their diplomas that way, which for a high school equivalency. We have English language acquisition. It used to be called ESL, English Second Language. We have lots of students from lots of different countries. I think the last time I checked countries, I think we have from 19 different countries in our program right now. And that program right now is the one of all of these programs I have that has the biggest growth. It is just exploding. It's a great thing to have um, more of these students learning the English language. Occupational network. These are students that come through the high school with an occupational course of study. Most of these students have some type of disability, um, which is called IBD, which is uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities. They come through us after they graduate high school to improve their reading and to improve their math, and then most of these we then get into college. Um, and it's, it's on their own time, and um, it's 
not like a time limit they have to do something. It's when they're ready, we're ready to get them involved. Uh, prison classes, and I just inherited these prison classes, but we have prison classes in Lexington where students get their diplomas. So hopefully when they're released, they have something that where they can make a better life for themselves. Um, now, the Atlas program, it used to be like I told you, it used to be called Get Real. That is the program that's kind of special for the 16 and 17 and the 18 year olds. They come to us from the high schools and they have to get their adult high school diploma. Um, we um, have them come in, they work on this diploma, and there's other things that they do to prepare them for life. We, or we try to prepare them for life. We try to get them involved in the, the courses that, that Jonathan has in the, um, the tenure and ed department. We try to get them involved there. We try to get them not just to get a diploma, but to move on and to make something better in themselves. And then the last thing we have here is the College Transition Center. It used to be called Developmental Math and English. A lot of you probably remember it that way. But this is a program that we have that the students come in. And if they're not quite ready for the curriculum English and the math classes, they go to these classes, and then all of these students are prepared to be successful. Now, looking at all this list right here, the main thing for these students, all of these students, are they didn't make it one place or the other. They have had difficulties. There have been barriers in their way. Well, the reason we're there is to remove these barriers and help these people be successful. And that is our main thing for this. Okay? So that is our, that's what we have for ecology and career readiness. Now I want to tell you what I found out. Now, let me tell you, when I met with the Lexington Rotary, Club the other day. They had already been doing this for a couple years, I believe. And so I'm brand new to this because I didn't hear it in that program too. So uh, this program will be moving out to campus and they were in Lexington at an off-site where they will be moving on to campus. But these are the things that they're going to do and continue to do with our students. And like I said, this is the Lexington Rotary Club. They're going to meet with our students the last Tuesday of each month. They do provide lunch. It's nothing elaborate. Those students are happy with anything they bring them. It might be a sandwich. It might be you know, whatever it is. They bring them a sandwich. And then they have gift cards for accomplishments for completing credits. You know, I told you these students complete their credits to get their diplomas. Um, if they graduate, they, they give them a gift card. And then they always have a student of the month that they give them some type of reward for that. Uh, they offer presentations on leadership. We want to call these lunch and learn. And that's something what, that just my mind was really turning there because I know a lot of you, and I'm just thinking the expertise that's sitting in this room right now and the leadership that some of you could share with these students that help boost them on to be successful. Um, they um, lead field trips. Uh, there is a member in their club that I think is a pilot, so he takes them out once a year to the, um, the airport, and these students just love it. So they see a plane, they get to get on the plane and sit on the plane for a minute. They don't get to fly, but they just sit on the plane, and they, and they get to do some stuff. But some of these students have never, been ha never have had those opportunities to do those things. So this is something that they can see and do that, that they wouldn't have another opportunity to do. Uh, we want to broaden the, these students the horizons. We want to introduce the diverse cultures. And we have some of the members come and discuss mission trips, what they've seen in other countries. Our students, we have had students that haven't really been out of Davidson County, if you can believe that. So if they hear about things, see pictures from other things, hear about other cultures, that just really piques their interest and gets them to think about other things. And then one of the members, and this is why I put this on this, they said, we want to show these students that they can depend on us. And that was so, so, so important for me to hear because we have students from the Lexington Children's Home. We have students that parents are in the, in the home. They might be with a grandparent or they may be with family, uh, some other family or friends. And people haven't been dependable for these students. And that gentleman said, we want to show these students that we are dependable and they can depend on us. And that to me was the world that was gold. So that's what they're doing. So um, one of the things that I'm, I'm wondering, and this is something that, you know, if y'all were interested in partnering with us or coming
standing behind Lexington and helping Lexington or whatever you want to do, we would welcome anything. Of course, they do this only for the Atlas program. They don't do it for any of the other programs. They only do it for them. But we are, we are so appreciative of what they do, and the students love it. Does anyone have a question for me? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd like to say one thing everybody should keep in mind that I've done, and that's starting scholarships out there for the school. Yes. And I've done it over a period of time. And, and the most important thing is to get the notes at the end of the year from the students saying why they were able to go, and it helps them out. That amount of money given to a big college is just dropping short kids in. But it's really a thing to think about seriously. Start a scholarship. I'm sure that you will really about that they can help us. Oh, it's exactly. Not like that. Yes, and thank you so much for that. There have been so many students that have been blessed with um, with with the help that you know you've given through scholarships and, and other things. But you know we do appreciate anything and everything that that you do for us. Davis and Davy is a wonderful place to be. I mean, I, I am so blessed to be able to work there, and I have some of my colleagues here, and um, and they can attest to it is a great place to be. We have some great students, and um, it's kind of a secret out on the highway sometimes because a lot of people don't know about it. But this is my program. I want to make sure that everybody knows because if you have anybody in your family, your neighbors, or anybody that could um, could benefit from any of these programs, please let me know, and I'll be happy to. Um, Do you want to have a question? Yes. How many people are in the Atlas program? There's probably about. Um, it varies because when they graduate, then they go on. There's probably about 20 at a time, somewhere in there. Um, they don't stay around. We move them on to other programs. So when, once they graduate, we move them on. And then we get new students all the time. I get phone calls every week from parents that their children are leaving high schools. Um, and then this is a program that they can do with us. So this is a way where they're not going to stop school. They can come to us. I'm telling you, I, I call high school. Um, high school's not for everybody. And um, this is a way that they can still get their degrees, they can still make something of themselves, they can get the jobs they want, they can go on to college, they can do anything they want to do. It's just a different way to do it than traditional high school. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else may know, may know this? What's the difference between the high set and the GED? It's just two different tests. There's a little bit of differences with them. A GED <coughs> is four tests. Reading and writing is together, math, science, and social studies. The students pay for them. They're $26 each. The students pay for them to go to our testing center, take these tests one at a time. When they get them all finished, they get their high school equivalency diploma. A high set five test. You can either do a paper pencil or computer based, but GED is only computer based. Reading and writing is separated, math, science, and social studies. The state just gives us the option of the, of the test. The diploma is exactly the same. It's a high school equivalency diploma uh, given by the state of North Carolina. Is, that, is it $26 per test per subject? And high set is $15 per subject. And I'll tell you about 95% of our students like high set better. <coughs> they really do. Yes, so maybe mention why it's important with these atlas uh, or next gen or mm -hmm. get rid of them, whatever we're calling them today. If they complete within the cohort, oh, they yes. don't count as a dropout right. school system. Mm -hmm. We have affiliation agreements with Lexington City Schools, Thomasville City Schools, Davidson County Schools, and Davidson, uh, Davidson County Schools. And what it is, if this student graduates with us, Five years after they started ninth grade, any time within that five years, the school system can code them. It's called a W2T, which they can code them as a transfer instead of a dropout. So it not only helps the school because they don't have to code them as a dropout, it helps us too. And then most of all, it helps the student. That, that is the main thing. But we're all working together. 
um, to get these students done. So when these students do this adult high school, that's why these younger students, they don't have a choice. They don't do the high school equivalency. They do the adult high school program so they can get that, so the school can benefit also. And then I work with um, the county office and report these things back to them so they know who is a graduate. And we keep spreadsheets and all that. These are great questions, just man. How many GED tests do you give a year or high set they were? Oh my goodness. Um, to be perfectly honest, most of our students at Davis Davis and Davy like the adult high school program better, even my older students. I think we've given out this program our program here runs from June the first no, July 1 to June 30th. And I think we've got around 100 um, high school equivalency tests that, that students have passed. Um, but it's many, many, many more adult high school uh, diplomas. And when they get their adult high school diploma, it's signed by our president and a board member and then the superintendent from their school system and a board member. And it, the diploma is a little different. It says adult high school diploma. They're both the same. I mean, a high school equivalency is good. They can do anything they want to with it either. But um, we really do have more of the adult high school graduates than we do um, high school equivalency. One of the things is uh, the adult high school program is completely free. It doesn't cost the student anything. The ESL program is completely free. To prep for the high school equivalency program is completely free. Um, our classes are all completely free. The only time a student has to pay money is to take the high school equivalency test. Yes, sir. There are uh, Steve, students that uh, you have to complete either the high school, uh, the adult high school uh, program or the equivalency test. Uh -huh. how, how many of those students uh, then elect to pursue further education? Well, not as many as we like, but we really try. We would really like for more of them. You know, it's, we meet with these students and we try to catch them you know, when they're getting close to getting finished. We do have, I don't know, even the percentage right now, we do have a good number that go on to school. Some of them choose to go on to work. Um, there are some that take some of the um, continuing ed classes. And like, I've got one right now that says, when I get out, I just want to do my welding because I've got a job offer if I can get my welding certificate. So that's what we're, you know, taking them in the line. So we try to get them to go however they want to go, but, if, you know, we talk to all of them and, um, and see. But, you know, life happens sometimes and, and we don't capture all of them, but we do get a good number of them. But we're hoping to improve that with every semester that goes along. Any other questions? Why don't you tell them the range of ages that we deal with? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you one classroom right now that I have. And, and, my range is in that classroom. 16 is the earliest we can take somebody, okay? They have to have an admission of a minor form that has to be signed by the, their parents and or guardian, the school system or principal and the superintendent before we can take them. But sitting in my classroom today is a 79-year-old lady who is trying to get her diploma. So um, we graduated people who are 80, 81. It is just, it, that is the whole range. I mean, you're going to see a little bit of everybody. So it's never too late. I have people call me sometimes, they're 30 years old, and say, I've waited too long. And I say, No, you haven't. Uh, we, you know, we take anybody. But like I said, she is in there, and she's there every day. And she is so excited that she's using a computer because, uh, you know, there were no such things. There were no computers, you know, when she grew up. Well, there were no computers when I grew up either, so let's you know, just be honest. But, um, but we do have a, a class range, so everybody is welcome. And what they do is they, if, if you know anybody's interested, you call me, and I get you on the right track to go. But I really appreciate your time, and I want to thank you while I'm up here for, you know, we get to take part in your um, shadow day in the fall, and our students love it, and that is such a wonderful experience for my students, and I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for letting us be part of that, and I thank you for letting me uh, 
have this time with you today. And if you see that you want to, you know, partner with us to do anything, we would love to have you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Jill, and thanks for reaching out to us. We appreciate that. And so, some of you may know, but I think most, most of you don't, but last July, the Thomasville City Schools um, nominated me um, to be their representation on the Board of Trustees for the college, and that has been one of the coolest boards that I've ever gotten to serve on, the retired superintendents and um, other people in the community. There's about 12 of us on the board, and you, you get to see all the inner workings, and so from that perspective, Jill, it's really exciting to have you out in the community, um, especially at the Rotary Clubs, um, presenting the program. So that, that means a lot from that side as well. Um, we appreciate it. Um, I was looking through the, the bulletin and kind of making some notes on some stuff um, of what's coming up, and I started looking at it. I will not be here next week running that church camp. It's the installation of officers, and then we've got a week off for the 4th of July. So it'll actually be quite a while before um, I get to see you all. Mary Jane, I believe, is back next week. Um, so first for her for safe travels of coming back, um, but I will look forward to seeing everybody. Um, and then you're stuck with me for a while, and then I go on our trip out west. So you're stuck with um, Jason for a while, and then you're stuck with me for several months. So um, I'm, I'm really excited, um, and we'll share thoughts and words and wisdom and everything like that later as well as assembly of what's to come for 24, 25. But um, I appreciate everybody's support while Mary Jane's been out and everybody that's been helpful through that. Um, it means a lot. So if you will stand um, and join me in the four way test. Thank you. 